Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Lessons and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate your time and your viewership. It means a lot. So I know we have a lot of fans of Paco Rabanne out there, whether you like Invictus, Invictus Legend, uh, Victory, Aqua, maybe you like Ultraviolet Man, which was actually a very similar presentation, identical presentation, but in purple. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at Ultra Red, which is a release from 2008. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Ultra Red Man by Paco Rabanne, I do wanna mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like fragrance reviews here on YouTube, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please be sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. I also wanna mention that if you are interested in picking up this fragrance, you may do so from fragrance buy.ca. All of their information is going to be down below. They have a lot of really hard to find designer and niche fragrances for really, really good prices. And I know this is one that's been around for over a decade now. So it is easy to find it for a really good price. And it's an awesome fragrance. I actually got my nose on it for the first time. I think like two or three years ago, I was at a perfume mania in the mall. And I said, should I purchase it? Should I purchase it? And I remember really enjoying it. Well, I actually got this in the mail about a week and a half ago, I smelled it. It immediately brought back memories of times when I was wearing a different fragrance, but one that I think is aesthetically similar. And no, I'm not going to mention Ultra Zest. I know a lot of people have made that comparison and I kind of get it, but it reminded me of another fragrance, which I haven't seen anybody else make a connection to yet. But in any case, this has praline, blood orange, tonka bean, vanilla, patchouli, and I think it's a stunning release from the company Paco Rabanne. And so I'm excited to tell you about the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So as soon as this fragrance opens, you are going to get this really unique and really decadent sweetness from the fragrance. Now there are so many ingredients in here that are giving off a sweet vibe. You have the tonka bean, you have the vanilla, you have the praline, but it's the praline that really stood out for me. And as soon as I smelled it, it was so odd because I said, this is reminding me of something. And it was reminding me of being in a hotel room peering out over the window into the, um, I guess the water. And it was a time when I was vacationing, not much of a vacation because it's really only two hours away from where I live, but I was in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I remember I went to a local perfume shop in Atlantic City and I purchased a bottle of Black Excess by Paco Rabanne. And I said, why is it bringing me memories of that? And then when I looked at the note breakdown, I saw that they both have praline. Coincidentally, they're both also from the same brand. And I said, oh, Oh my God, it's the praline that's in here that is definitely giving me that vibe and that impression. And it really conjured up those same thoughts and memories and feelings. And then the more that I smell that I pick up on like this dusty powdery pseudo chocolate vibe. Now I know it's vanilla and tonka bean, but I'm also getting like 10 or 15% of like a little chocolate in here as well. And I think that that note that I'm getting is also kind of reminding me of Le Medial by Guerlain, which is like one of my favorite fragrances of all time, albeit this is missing the almond, which I think would have really perfected the blend. But I really think that Paco Rabanne did an incredible job with this one. So, you know, Black Excess, if I'm remembering correctly, came out in 2005. And that fragrance was composed by Olivier Cresp, whom I had the pleasure of meeting in person, but also Rosendo Mateo. So this came out three years later, same exact brand, very similar DNA, with the exception that the uh, Black Excess did not have blood orange. That one actually had lemon, if I'm not mistaken. It had some herbal and aromatic notes in there too. So this one is more about the blood orange and uh, it's not as earthy in the base. I find this one to not be as sweet, but also to not be as earthy either. And so it kind of goes in its own direction. 
but this is an awesome fragrance. If you are a fan of like citrus gourmand fragrances, you want something that has a nice even balance of being sweet, but also being very bright and refreshing. I think this one would be an awesome pickup for you. So for me personally, it reminded me a lot of Black Excess with also borrowing elements from Le Medial by Guerlain, which is like uh, an amazing fragrance for me. And it's one that I've spoken about quite a great deal on my channel. And there isn't much of an ev evolution, I gotta be honest with you. It does open up with a very um, heady citrus introduction. And the citrus notes in here are probably gonna stick around for like 10 or 15 minutes. And in terms of the blood orange, I get it. I even have blood orange, it's essential oil in my bedroom. And it doesn't smell too different from regular orange, to be honest with you. So you are going to get that warm, orangey, citrusy introduction, but then it's very quickly going to evolve into like this praline, vanilla, tonka bean combination. And perhaps the patchouli is in there just giving it some weight and sustenance in the base, but it's really about the sweetness. And so if this is a citrus gourmand, I would say it's like 25% citrus, 75% gourmand. It's an awesome fragrance. Fragrance by has it if you are interested in picking it up. And it actually kind of shocks me that this fragrance has not been spoken about more in the past decade plus, because like I said, it's been around since 2008. But in any case, I really enjoyed this fragrance and I hope you have a chance to get your nose on it. If you haven't already tried it, chances are you already tried it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I find this fragrance to be pretty unique, uh, despite the fact that I was able to make a few comparisons, and of course other people online are comparing it to Ultra Zest by Thierry Mugler, which is like incredibly hard to find at the moment. Uh, but I actually find it to be a little bit similar to Black Excess by Paco Rabanne, and that's because of the memories that it conjured up for me. So I'm not going to question or refute my memories. So that's kind of like the end-all be-all for me in terms of comparisons. If it reminds me of something uh, or a specific memory, not a smell, but a memory that I've associated to a smell, that's how I know that that is a strong comparison for me at least. The overall smell, very pleasant. I would just say if you're not a fan of gourmand fragrances, if you're not a fan of sweet fragrances, chances are you may not love this one. So definitely sample it first if you have that luxury. Uh, in terms of longevity, I got about eight hours on my skin, which is great. I think it might be the praline, the vanilla, the tonka bean, and the patchouli, because there are a lot of base heavy ingredients that are used as fixatives. And so I think it's on account of those ingredients that it lasts so long. So I would say about seven or eight hours longevity. Projection was great for the first hour. So for the first hour, it radiated within an arm's length. It didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about, I would say the fifth or sixth hour where it started to radiate within an elbow's length and you got kind of get closer to people in order for them to be able to smell you. But the performance is really good, especially for the genre, for the concentration, and for the year of its release. Uh, I think we see that for a lot of fragrances, if they've been around for a decade, they've been, you know, uh, reformulated ad nauseum. And so I'm kind of glad to see that this one is still performing pretty well, despite the fact that it's 13 years old or almost 13 years old. In terms of the versatility, I find this one to be perfectly unisex. I can see this one appealing to somebody who's a little bit younger on account of the sweetness. I can also see this one being worn casually and dressed up. I feel like it's unique enough that it can be worn dressed up and you will turn a few heads. And I think it has a very high versatility in terms of the occasions, um, like I said, formal and casual, but in terms of seasons, I think this one can be worn when it's a little bit colder outside, but even on a cool spring day, you can pull this one off as well. It's going to hit the spot very well. In terms of the presentation, really cool with the built-in atomizer, kind of looks like a black light, but a red light in this case. Uh, so my final verdict on Ultra Red by Paco Rabanne is if you are a fan of citrus gourmand fragrances, if you like the note of praline, if you are a fan of fragrances like Black Excess or Le Medial by Guerlain, chances are you are really going to enjoy this fragrance. I would certainly recommend picking this one up. And also, yes, I'll jump on the bandwagon and say that if you were once a fan of Ultra Zest, but now you're having a hard time acquiring it, definitely look at this as an alternative. I think it's a solid fragrance to pick up and just a great fragrance to have in your collection overall. So 
Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it. That was my review of, I almost said Ultra Zest. That was my review of Ultra Red <laughs> by Paco Rabanne. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And all you have to do is click on that red button. And of course, while you're at it, make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell. Again, if you are interested in picking this up, you may do so at fragrancebuy.ca. All of the information is gonna be down below. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you soon.